All right, we're out here at an uh, undisclosed location, and there is a, uh, a slightly over one year old Belgian Malinois that a gentleman purchased. And at some point, that dog started having a, a ton of leash reactivity, uh, reactivity towards other dogs and people. You can hear him off screen. We are about 75 yards away from him. He has him muzzled because he's a dick, basically. And he will try to eat people. He hasn't bit anyone. That's because the owner's done a pretty good job of just keeping him away from other people. But he's going to be here for a, a board and train program. And this is going to be our first introduction. And he said he's kind of 50-50. Sometimes he's super aggressive. Sometimes he's not so aggressive. But we'll go ahead and get him on camera. You can hear it. There's a lot of stress there. A lot of stress. Uh, that sound like that. That's like a dog sounding the alarm. And we're about 40 yards away. So you can pan over and show them what we're looking at. From this distance, from this distance, this dog's losing his mind. So, anyways, we're going to keep the camera rolling and you can just see, we're kind of trying to do this as a before and after. I've never met this dog before and I'm going to walk over and uh, attempt to make friends with him. So you just keep the camera rolling, follow me. I'll bring my little bag of hot dog treats, try to make friends with them the nice way. It probably won't happen the nice way. And if that's the case, we have other options up our sleeve. So, I can't take possession of this dog for four weeks if I can't trust him not to try to kill me. And uh, I don't like getting bit. So, to make it happen, kind of pan out that way. So if you can watch closely, when the mouth closes, a, a mouth closed means ready to strike, okay? It's like making a fist. So you'll see his mouth close as I get near him. Potentially that's better. See that stress there? Good. Now I'm just going to touch him everywhere. Let him know, like, I'm not going to hurt you. If you do something stupid, uh, I'll make it very unpleasant for you. So we can check the, uh, see that mouth closed? Woo! He's ready. The question is, if we took, he kind of knows obviously with the muzzle on, he wouldn't be able to bite me. But when you hear that, when you hear that, you can come in probably real close to this. When you hear him, um, man, that breathing stop and that mouth closed, he might as well have just done like this. So, he's getting better though, by the minute. Oh, yeah. And obviously soon enough, we'll just go ahead and take the muzzle off. Oh, good boy, buddy. Good boy. Yeah. It's getting looser and looser. See, no more mouth closing. Very nice. Good boy, buddy. Sorry, come here, Bubba. Yeah. It's all mostly fear-based. Just straight stress. When you heard that one bark, that one particular bark, it's like a, we call it like an alarm bark. Like, oh shit, something's going on and it's not good though, man. There's nothing out here. This is neutral territory. Um, so fight or flight is what mo most dogs go into, right? When they're that stressed, they think like their life is in danger. Fight or flight. And he's torn between the two. Torn between the two. Uh, obviously though, a lot more fight. Um, you know, enough to where he was, we let that line loosen up enough, he had no problem coming to me. And I'm telling you, it wasn't going to be no uh, pretty, uh, nothing pretty is going to come out of that. So. We just want to get this knocked out early so we can move on with training. I'm basically pushing his buttons because I, if he's going to act stupid, Let's just get it over with now. Does it make sense? Because when I get back home and I'm going to be handling him and putting on a collar and touching him and maybe putting him in a crate, taking him out of a crate, petting him, I don't want him to think 
you know, I don't like what you're doing, let me turn around and tag you because I'm uncomfortable with that. If he goes to do that, now is the time to iron that out. Obviously, A's got a muzzle and B, we're hooked up with this. So, all right, buddy? He's going to be obviously most stressed when I put my mouth or face near him. Which, by the way, don't do that at home. I, people do the stupidest. They're like, look at your little puppy. You bend down, you're going to get bit right in the face if that dog has any fear whatsoever. So, he's getting better. Mouth staying open. Tony may want to come around. He's not like totally comfortable, but he's doing better. Now what I'd be interested to see is if we can put him in a submissive position. Be real tense. Oh Lord, tense. The other thing, if I get low, he may take that as an opportunity like, oh, I'll take advantage of that. So. See that mouth close? Stress. Boy, huh? Yeah. It may seem mean, but what if my little kid comes over and goes, hey, puppy, and jabs him in the face with their fingers by accident? Tail tucked. He's not happy, but he's pretty loose considering. And I'm gonna massage him and let him know everything's under control. I got it. Boy, is he tense. Woo! You see that claw right there? Tony, remember we talked about that? Yeah. If they get that foot under them, or this one actually, just like that. This will really stress him out. Dominating position. Again, I'm literally, yes, I'm trying to f with the dog. What if tomorrow he spins around, I'm talking to someone, and he feels that I went to dominate him, and he wants to fire off and eat me? Horrible timing with these things. It's fine. We're doing good. I think we need this. Tony, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Well, is that it? it? Might be a good. false alarm? It might be good. Oh, it's because the irrigation guy's over there. He was messing with it. Anyways, um, you're doing pretty good. <sighs> I will show you what an alpha roll could look like. We don't do them too often, but I do want this dog to understand we're not going to put up with any BS. when he relaxes. Make sure there's no ants or nothing over here. I'm going to try to stretch him out. Relax. If he goes to get up, I'm going to let him know it ain't happening. Good boy, huh? Good boy. If he goes to get up, we grab these legs here, the lower ones. Good boy, huh? Now what we're actually simulating, aside from dominating him, is exactly what they're going to do at the vet's office. If they have to do something with his feet, check down here, there will be a vet tech that lays on him like such. So he's doing well. He's doing actually really well. Yeah, buddy. Now he's doing so good, we will let him up for being so good. He's pretty loose. I take it back. He's not super loose, but he's still not trying to buck the system. This will get better and better. We'll just keep working on this. 
until he's just completely relaxed and falls asleep. Not today, but we'll, prep, we'll do it some more. Step over here and take this cover. Yeah. He's not allowed up like that. He's fast though. And if he wants to be this dicked up, we'll go the other way. Good boy. Okay, come on. All right, much better. Moment of truth. Scared dog is a dangerous dog. So, tail's looking better. Good boy, buddy. Yeah, I'm drunk. Oh, it's a good boy. trim those nails buddy so long I'm assuming I could be wrong but you probably don't walk him as much as you'd like to because nah, and then we have to trim his nails and his big boy will trim his nails yeah but if you could walk him more if you're able to walk him more then the nails would naturally you know trim themselves you know on the well, sidewalk you know, we never really go on the pavement too much oh. we go in a dog park just all mud right right yeah so good boy huh you my friend now? Pause the video here and hook up another six foot. All right, so here we are about 20 minutes later. Uh, three repetitions of using the dominant dog collar. Um, and uh, he's not fixed, but it's, it's good enough to a point that we can continue on with training. So he doesn't love me, but relaxed enough around me to do that. You can't ask for more than that. So um, you saw how it was when we first started. He was just ready to who knows what. I just was stressed out to the max, ready to bite, run away, just act the fool, and uh, now we're good. Much better. We'll just keep working it. And uh, anyways, we love Malamars. He just needs a little help from Puppy Jesus, man. That's all it is. So we're going to exercise the demons. We got one of the big ones out today. But they're still lurking in there. But this is great. What a world of day. It looks like a normal dog right now. So. Alright. See you on the next video. Stay tuned. Watch the progress with uh, Mr. Sarge here. Uh, one year and about three months. Hey, and for what it's worth, uh, we were just talking with the owner, Ryan, and he said that backyard breeder, no big deal, who cares? Except that backyard breeder said, yeah, yeah, the puppy's ready. Here, he's eight weeks old. Take him. They took possession of him, then looked at it, some paperwork, and realized he was only five weeks old. So, um... It could be partially from that being somewhat underdeveloped. You can almost think of it as like a preemie baby, you know? You're gonna have some issues. And 
he would say, what's the difference between five weeks and eight weeks? A lot. That's a lot of developmental time that he should be hanging out with his mommy and his brothers and sisters. And uh, anyhow, he missed out on a little bit of that, so it could be partially from that. And then it just could be also just, you know, funky genetics. Maybe mom and dad had issues. Um, and anyways, when these little things, it always starts small. I'm sure it, he didn't just come out of the box at, we'll call it four months old, trying to eat everybody. Uh, but anyways, it developed into this, so we'll get it fixed. We're going to get going before we get wet, so thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Mumble, mumble.